Hi guys, Carl here from Self Sufficient Hub and today I've been able to finish work a couple of hours early and I've been desperate to get out into this field. This is a field I've not been here before but I drove past it a couple of days ago and I don't know if you can pick them up behind me but there's a few little white spots that are mushrooms just next to this country road and I'm fairly confident that they're either field mushrooms or horse mushrooms, probably horse mushrooms, looking at the size of them. And I've been desperate to get out here and try and harvest some. So today's the day by the looks of it. Let's go have a look. Okay, so I've basically just been following the mushrooms. They're everywhere. I don't know if you can spot, uh, spot I don't know if you can spot any of the white dots behind me on the floor, but they are literally everywhere. They're all up on this rise behind me. So I haven't stopped to pick any yet because what I like to do is I like to do the walking first and then pick on the way back to the car. So I think we're going to head out to those and start picking and head back. But I uh, just wanted to stop to show you on the way, this guy. Now this is a nice big horse mushroom. I'm fairly confident. We'll uh, pick him down and have a quick look. What a whopper. I'm fairly confident in what it is. One of the one of the things that you can use to differentiate a horse mushroom from a field mushroom, apart from size, the size of this guy, is that cogwheel pattern around the outside. That's very distinctive for a horse mushroom. Um, everything else is saying horse mushroom to me. There's no vulva. He's definitely coming home with me. Look at that. That's a, a meal in itself. So these are uh, horse mushrooms. They're, they're growing everywhere so i'm definitely going to go home with a nice full bag you can see they form a ring and the outside of the ring you've got that slightly darker colored grass where it's so rich and what that is is you've got the the web of mycelium under the ground which is basically the the main body of the the fungi plant and these mushrooms are just the fruiting body so if you think of it like an apple tree the tree is growing outward in this circle and it grows bigger every year and then on the outside of the tree is where it sends up those those fruits which is what we're going to pick sometimes you can see the circles of the what they call fairy rings from quite a distance away i can't see any that i can show you from a distance but i'm sure at some point i will anyway if you want to id horse mushrooms then i've done a video on that and i've also done a video on iding field mushrooms the identification checks are basically the same um, there's very little difference between them from a forager's point of view, but field mushrooms are a little bit smaller and horse mushrooms grow to a bigger size. So I'm going to harvest a load of these now and then head back to the car. Here's a great example of a ring, you see? And that's because the mycelium, the main body of the plant, or the main body of the fungus rather, is growing in the ground there and is growing within that circle. Isn't that amazing? I've just spotted as well, over on the opposite brow. Another patch up there. And some more there, they, they, they are absolutely everywhere. Some more there. So a tip I want to share with you guys actually for picking these mushrooms when you pick the larger ones well any size really they can be infested and if you've if you're not bothered then just pick them if you are bothered then you might want to leave them behind but what I tend to do when I've got a big choice like this that I can be fussy I look at the stipes the stems and if they've got lots of holes in them then that's a clear sign that something has got up in there and I would just take the stipe out throw it to one side, check a bit further up. And you can see here, around this edge, there's lots of little holes in there, so they've probably gone into the cap. So if we check this one, you can see the stipe again. It's full of holes. And I'll just pull that out. And further up, that looks much better. So we'll take this one, because that cap's probably fine, and I'll discard the stipe. So I'm only gonna do that if I've got, you know, a lot of choice but we certainly do today, so. So I've quickly come home, I've just gone and fed the animals, fed the pigs and the goats and what have you. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to just put these in the dehydrator. I'm gonna keep one or two out for my tea 
and the rest we're going to put in the dehydrator. We've already got some saved already from this season. These are this season's field mushrooms and we're going to add our horse mushrooms to it now. So we're just getting into the thick of mushroom season now. It's mushroom season all year round, but the end of the summer into the early winter is when we get most of our mushrooms. So um, I like to make sure that by the time winter comes, I've got enough mushrooms dehydrated to get me right through until next year. So we're gonna dehydrate these now. There we go, that's that done. So I went back out but uh, I didn't find anything I was looking for. There's a spot where, since we've lived here, I haven't found any giant puffballs. I did find one last year and it had gone over it basically. It was, it had started blackening and, it, and that means that the spores inside had started forming rather than that flash, it all turns to like this big cloud of spores inside and at which point it's, uh, you know, toxic, you can't eat it. So I went back to check that spot because I know that giant puffballs are around now, but uh, yeah, nothing was there. Anyway, so I'm back at the house. So I wanted to show you this. We got this free on Facebook Marketplace, this trailer. And this is destined to become a second version of the big trailer that we turned into chicken housing this trailer that we built and i showed you that i built that on a video and uh as you can see it's perfect for a chicken house because we can move it around with the electric fence around it so we're going to turn that other trailer into basically one of these so that the chickens that are in the wood can come out and they can also be mobile out here on this grass so the time now is about five o'clock. I've got someone delivering some hay shortly. As the hedge trimming comes to an end, I've ordered about 10 bales of hay, which they're only the small bales, and they'll see us through for a couple of months with, you know, topping up with the hedge trimming and what have you. I'm gonna take that delivery of hay, gonna milk the goats and have some dinner. That'll probably close it out for today. I've got lots of I've got lots of other things I want to show you, but I know that if I keep recording, I won't have time to edit and upload this today, and then I'll break my streak. Don't want that, do we?